Hi, everybody. Um, can everybody hear me? Um, you can um, post into the chat box below. We'll wait a few minutes until, um, until everybody's logged in. Okay, should we begin now? Um, everybody's... Oh, I've got a bit of an echo. Hang on a minute. Yep, we're all good to go. Okay, my name's Melanie Newman and this is Dash the Bichon. He's been playing like all morning, so <laughs> he's, he's ready for a sleep. He's had his morning snack. He's ready for a sleep. This isn't normally his grooming day, so he's probably a little bit confused about life at the moment. Um, I just want to know where everybody's from. So if you could pop in the little chat um, where everybody's from, that would just be amazing. Okay, so we'll get started. I'm going to go through... Um, different slickers to use on a Bichon coat or a curly coat dog. So Bichons, Poodles, um, Cavoodles, those type of breeds and those type of coat types. And then I'm also going to go through some combs as well um, and some handling techniques as well as brushing techniques. So we really nail in on our technique and getting that perfect finish and removing all um, all that dead coat and getting a nice fluffy no knots um, perfect little pooch has everybody got their dog with them or are we um, are you guys just learning from now or are you grooming with me so it would be amazing if you could groom with me and then you guys can ask any questions that you guys have about um, about brushing um, while while you're grooming. I've popped um, Dash on my bench, and then I've popped him on a non-slip mat, and then he really likes this non-slip mat as well. So I've actually got two non-slip mats for him. I don't know why he just really likes this blue one. So I mostly groom him on this now. Um, so it's really important that you do use a non-slip mat. I don't like grooming my dogs on a blanket or anything like that. I just prefer them to be on the bench with their non-slip mat because I want them to understand what is about to happen. If I put Dash's favourite blanket here, he will think it's night time and he will be like, oh, okay, it's a rest time. I better go to sleep now. So I like him to be prepared, although I don't think he's very prepared, but um, that's why I prefer just to have my mat. But you might even want, if you've got an older dog maybe, you might want to put a little blanket there but I don't find it's necessary. Okie dokie. So let's talk about our different slickers. Um, I prefer to use a slicker and a comb on him and I'll use different slickers throughout so I can show you guys the difference between um, all the slickers. Um, first of all, I'm going to show you and I'm going to come around and show you um, because I give you a bit of a close up on these slickers. This slicker has um, protective tips on the pins. So this is a perfect slicker 
for puppies, for older dogs that have a little bit of um, skin irritation or their immune system might not be what it used to be. So this is perfect because it's not going to scratch the skin as we're going through the coat. And these little tips on this slicker, I find they actually don't catch the coat either so they don't pull out the wrong coat they're leaving the healthy hair in there and pulling out the dead hair so I will come closer to my camera and you guys can see the the pins I really like using this slicker on puppies and I've got an older miniature poodle who has um, a little bit of immune problem at the moment. So I use this slicker on her and you can see the little pins and they're white little tips and they're not overly big, the tips. So the pins still penetrate through, through that coat and the pins are still close enough together where they're still going to really separate the coat. So I really, really like this slicker. And then I'm going to talk about the flexi slicker. So this is probably my go-to flexi slicker, my slicker that I use on most dogs. It does have a firm side and a softer side. And I'll just get rid of all the hair in my, current, in my slicker. And I'll bring that around. And the pins are a little bit longer than the um, than the protective pin slicker. And you can see this is a firm side, the dark side. And then the lighter side is a little bit more um, flexible as you go through the coat. So if we can see how firm those pins are compared to that side. So um, I love this slicker because it contours with the body, so especially for under armpits and behind the ears. So um, I'll use this a little bit on Dash today. And then we've got our universal slickers. So I love a good universal slicker. Um, the pins are a little bit thick more thicker than the protective pin the protective tip one and the flexi so I will show you the difference so we can see the pins are a lot thicker than the flexi okay and then if we have a look at, this is, a, this is a universal that I use on Dash all the time, especially around his, um, his legs and all these sort of heavy areas. And then we've got a universal long pin. So if you've got a dog that has more of a long coat, this is perfect because it actually penetrates further down the coat as you're brushing. And then while I've got this slicker here, we'll just quickly talk about how the pins actually work when we're brushing through our dog. So if you can see our pins come straight up and then they bend the opposite way, this actually works by when it's brushing through our dog's coat, it helps catch that dead coat and pull that dead coat out as we're brushing. So if we think about how when we're brushing our dog, so we're coming through that coat and the little hairs are all catching and pulling on those dead on that dead coat and then pulling it out. If we just had straight pins coming up, it wouldn't actually catch on the dead hair and it wouldn't actually help remove that dead coat. So this is important to know because when we start to talk about technique and how we're actually going to brush the coat and manoeuvre through our dog's hair, it's important to keep this in mind, how this slicker is actually made and how the pins will help assist our brushing our dog. And I just want to quickly talk about when we brush our dog, the part that we use the most on our slicker will be this part. So it's kind of half a 
half a circle. And a lot of people call it the heart of the slicker because as our slicker wears down, this is a part that will wear down first. So if you've got an older slicker at home, you can have a look at where you're mostly wearing that slicker down as well. Sometimes um, some of my slickers, I might only use, you know, a quarter of the slicker because I might only use that slicker for brushing their face, um, their muzzle, their whiskers. So I can actually see where the wear down is. But if we're brushing our dog's entire body with this slicker, we're mostly using this part of the slicker. Okie dokie. And then we'll just quickly go through our combs. These are the two combs I use the most. So this has a fine tooth and then a medium tooth on the other side. So I will always go through with the medium tooth side after I use the slicker and then I'll move on to the fine tooth side and we, all, we will always use our slicker and then our comb. We'll never just go straight in with our comb. Um, I really like this comb. And when I look to buy a comb, I look to see whether the pins actually taper down into a little point because when they taper down to that point, it means that they're really going to penetrate through that coat and help remove any um, loose or dead hair. And this is my fine tooth comb. So this comb is a lot more flexible um, and you can see, I don't know if you can see the, the actual teeth, the pins on this comb move compared to this one. This one's firm, like it's really a workhorse type comb. But this one is quite flexible. And the teeth are really, really super close together and they taper pretty much to a, a dull point. And this comb is so perfect for lifting coat before we, um, before we begin scissoring the coat, clipping the coat. It really separates the coat really well and um, we'll be using this today. And then we've got our bigger, I call this our workhorse comb. So you can use this on um, a lot of different breeds. It's really, really great for those larger breeds. So um, even your standard poodles and things like that because it's going to cover more ground as we um, go through that coat compared to like this little comb. Um, of course, I use a little comb because I have a little dog. But if you've got a bigger dog, this comb is perfect. Um, and I also like the way the comb, um, the teeth are a little bit more apart. So if I've got a dog that has a lot of coat and a lot of undercoat, um, instead of using a finer tooth, this is really going to help support that healthy coat as I'm going through with the comb instead of going through with the fine tooth comb and again it really separates the coat well and we also have the little finer bit on the end so that's great for any whiskers or any little bits that we need to um, remove around our dog's body do we have any questions uh, <clears throat> Someone said, can you go through brown marks while you're staring at the Brown marks. Yeah. So staining, I think that's what you refer to. Um, so I just had a question about brown marks. So I'm hoping that you mean that it's staining. Um, staining is another um, level of trying to maintain a white dog. I find it really, really hard to maintain a white healthy coat as soon as um, your dog's coat is stained 
that means that your dog's coat is damaged and is more susceptible to breaking. So then, of course, the cuticles are open, the, that hair follicle is broken, so more dirt and debris is actually going to go on that hair shaft and probably make it more stained. So if your dog does have a lot of staining, you've really got to keep that coat really super healthy. With um, Dash... Dash does have a little bit of staining around his eye area and around his mouth. I just try and keep that coat really super dry and super healthy and always clean and well conditioned because if we condition that coat, what's going to happen is it's going to smooth out the cuticles on that hair shaft and it's going to um, stop more dirt and oil coming in underneath those cuticles and making it brown. So it keeps it really nice and healthy. Um, so I hope that helps helps your um, question. Was there any other questions? How often do you recommend line brushing or maintenance for a standard um, I try and brush my dogs, um, well, say Dash and my miniature poodle who is in the corner there, they get bath once a week. So that gives them a complete groom out and um, so any dead coat in there is going to be removed straight away. So I would definitely recommend at least once to twice a week depending on how long the coat is. But even if the coat is like maybe a bit more than a centimetre, so even like half an inch length, I still recommend brushing because you're going to remove that dead coat and the new healthy coat is going to come in and your dog's coat is going to be nice and shiny and healthy and then your dog's going to really start to enjoy that grooming process a lot more as well. Um, so, yeah, I would definitely recommend once a week. If you've got a puppy, puppies are a little bit – oh, you're welcome. <laughs> um, puppies are another, <laughs> another area altogether. So if you do have a puppy, I definitely recommend grooming your puppy every day, um, even if it's one minute and then increase it to two minutes and then eventually five minutes and always finish on a – positive note so we don't want to finish on a negative note when dash was a baby he was terrible to groom he would squeal he would carry on and I've had him from a baby so he's had no horrible experiences he just didn't want to be groomed so I just kept trying to help him understand that he has to be brushed he has long hair and um, he needs to sort of, you have to teach them that they need to enjoy being groomed. And that means not, like I would never groom him if he was matted. I would, he's never been matted, but if he was, I would clip that area out and then just start again because I don't like to demat so it's going to hurt the dog because we want to create positive experiences and not negative experiences. Was there another one? What would Dash's coat naturally be without brushing? Is it a tight and curly coat? One of two curly smooth looks so that it's very hard to keep well brushed. So this is his coat now. So um, it is, it's not really super tight, but it, it is curly and it's curly enough to sort of sit up. Um, but his coat is really, really thick and we're just coming out of winter. So... Um, during the winter, his coat really thickens up and he's a boy boy. So he loves being outside. He digs holes. He, he actually digs my carrots up in my veggie garden because he loves carrots. So um, he is a real boy boy. So he spends a lot of time outside. So his coat really thickens up. But I just have to make sure I stay on top of any knots and tangles and even um, because I haven't brushed him for about a week and a half now so getting ready for this tutorial and he was starting to develop little um, knots behind his ears and on top of his head as well 
So um, I feel like they just develop really, really fast. And because he is a dog that is really active, he's not a quiet dog that just sits on the couch. So he does um, tend to get knots a lot, a lot um, faster than my other dogs. Um, about the texture and the maintenance between a poodle and a bichon. Um, depending on the coat of a poodle, my poodle has more of an open coat, so it is a lot easier to maintain. Dash's coat is quite thick and a bichon will have a little bit of undercoat in them. Um, but I, they are very similar and I treat them the same. So I keep them well hydrated, really moisturised because if we have a dry, brittle coat, it's going to be harder to remove any knots and tangles because as soon as that coat's broken at the end of the hair shaft, it becomes more susceptible to then knotting up with that other broken hair because it is a lot more porous and um it's a damaged coat so keeping that coat really healthy and hydrated I recommend for any breed that you're trying to grow coat and trying to um, just keep on top of the brushing as well um, that's what I find the best um, way to look after it out of a double coat um, I would do the same technique as what we're doing. So I would just do small sections at a time and I would use, um, depending on how long the double coat, so if you've got like a German Shepherd long hair, I would use the long hair universal. But if we've got like a shorter um, double coated breed, I would use the the shorter the shorter pin so depending on what type of what breed it is depending on the slicker as well but um, I would use the same technique and it's just doing small sections out of time so if you do have um, say matted pants on the back of your dog um, I would definitely start at the bottom of that area and head upwards towards the top of the tail and just do small sections at a time. And if you are trying to remove um, really heavy um, shedded areas that hasn't been removed for a long time, you really need to do it slow and steady because it can be quite heavy on that skin as well and it can cause irritation on the skin. So when you're removing that heavy shedded area where that coat is really dead and dull and needs to be removed, just do small sections at a time because you don't want to irritate the skin underneath because the skin underneath still needs to shed as well and because that coat hasn't been removed for such a long time because it's all matted the skin hasn't had a chance to shed either so there might be a bit of a build-up of skin cells on there so you just need to be super careful when you are removing any matted areas from a heavy shedding um, breed or dog I hope that helps answer your question perfect Okie dokie. So I, I try and groom um, all my dogs laying down. So I teach them to lay down. But I'll see if Dash will um, stand up. He might continue to lay down. Yep, he does. <laughs> if you are having trouble grooming your dog because your dog won't keep still and is a little bit naughty and a little bit cheeky and he's trying to chew the brush, um, is rolling over, biting, screaming, carrying on, things like that, just stop what you're doing and then start again and do really slow movement. So we don't want to move um, our dog too quickly. We want them to understand slow movements and calm and relaxing. I always try and groom in a relaxing environment, whether I'm putting on some soft music for them. Um, and when I have clients come in to for me to groom, I always put on soft music that I feel like I'm going to enjoy and the dog's going to enjoy. So if you create that really relaxing environment you will relax and then your dog will feel 
what you're feeling. If you're tense, your dog might start to feel a little bit more tense as well. Karen, from Toronto, what do you recommend for grooming Bichon ears? How often to clean with vet solution? And do all Bichons have a large amount of hair on their ears? In their ears? Um, I just had a question about Bichon ears. So I feel like with the hair in the ears, I don't pluck ears. I mostly get my vet to have a look down and if she feels there's a problem, then she'll remove the hair. But I don't usually pluck ears. If they are really heavy with hair, um, dashes aren't too bad. He doesn't have like heaps of hair coming out of his ears. Um, but if I do have a client that is quite hairy I'll just trim the hairs quite short around the ear canal and then clean it out I generally clean my dog's ears when I generally clean them every week and if they miss a bath then it's every two weeks so just trying to keep an eye on those um those ears as as I'm bathing and if I'm not bathing if they're just sitting on the couch with me I'll just have a quick look in their ears um, and sometimes smelling their ears. So if you feel like there's a little bit too much gunk around their ear canal, you can just smell that ear. And if there's a foul odour, that usually means foul um, isn't pleasant. So um, generally, generally means some kind of infection. So speak to your vet. But I hope that helps. Is there any other questions, Cool. Perfect. Okay. So... I'll begin with our, um, do you want to move it a bit? I'll get um, my little cameraman, cameraman slash <laughs> my husband to move it a little bit closer so you guys can see what we're doing. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, that's perfect. And then flip it around. Yep. Yep. Flip it around. Okie dokie. So we'll talk a little bit about our handling of our dogs. So when we're grooming our dogs, it's really important that we don't lift their legs higher than their back. So as soon as it goes a little bit too high and uncomfortable, I can feel that Dash is trying to sort of do his own little protest of laying down and being a pancake. So I generally, he thinks it's nap time. So I like to, re, to move their legs out in front. So using their natural movement, as we're grooming them. So if I do need to look under his armpit, I'm actually getting right underneath and looking. I'm not lifting up too high and then going, oh, no, his arm needs to go higher. I'm the one that's getting right underneath and having a look at that armpit. So it's up to us to really get into those places um, and not make our dog feel uncomfortable. With their back legs, come on, Dash, good boy. With their back legs, again, um, I will move. Here, so I'll move him around. I'll move his back leg slightly up, but that's as far as I'll go. I'll never, ever go higher than his back. Um, and this is almost on a 45-degree angle. And, again, I would get underneath him to this area, I would never expect him to sort of be an acrobat and a gymnast. Um, and I always support, as I'm brushing, I support his joints. So I'm always holding on to his knee area and really supporting his knee as I'm brushing this back leg. Okay, so I'll put him in position. So it's going to be a lot easier if he lays down because that's what he's used to been doing. Used to do. Come on, buddy, lay down. Okie dokie. 
So I always start with my legs first. So one, two, sorry, one, the other back, two, three, four, and then moving up towards his head. And I normally do his face last. So I'm going to use the relaxed co-conditioning spray on him today. So the co-conditioning spray will help remove any knots and tangles because it's hydrating and it's protecting the healthy coat and um, creating a little bit of slip so we can remove that dead unwanted hair that's causing those knots. So I like to spritz the area. And I'm just going to show you with the puppy slicker first. I call it the puppy slicker because it's nice and gentle. And I'm going to line brush. So I'm going to do a small section. And then once there's no knots in this area, then I'm going to do another section and so on and so on. And I repeat this process through his whole body. So if your dog is uncomfortable or learning to be brushed and groomed, um, you won't be able to do it in one sitting. But um, remember, always finish off a, your grooming session on a good note. So when your dog's being really super good and reward your dog. So if you normally reward with food or you might reward with um, a happy voice, it's up to you. Um, always finish on a good note. But if your dog's not used to it, just do small sections at a time and do one to um, five minutes a day. But Dash is, um, he's old enough to know better now. How long ago was Dash washed? Um, so I washed him about a week and a half ago um, just so he would have um, a few little knots and tangles. I normally bath him every week. So he normally get to bath on a Friday. Friday is bath day for Dash. And then if he's at a dog show, I will then bath him on the Sunday night or the Monday morning, depending on um, how far away the dog show is. Was there any other questions? No. Okay, so we're going to start with his foot area. And I'm just going to brush down just gently and slowly. And is there anyone grooming their dog at the same time? And I know it's going to be hard to reply because you should have your tools <laughs> in your hand and your dog. Okay, so we can see that this slicker is really separating the coat really, really well. And I also like to just pull up the hair around his toes and really make sure I'm getting any dead hair, any grass seeds because we're coming into spring in Melbourne as well. So making sure he's got no grass seeds in his little toe area. And just doing small sections. And if you feel like you don't have enough spray on and I don't in his hocks, so I'm going to brush again. Do you brush before the bath or the other way around? Um, depending on if I haven't brushed him for a long time um, and if he's got a few little knots in him, I will pop him, I will brush those knots out first. Um, and I'll do it very, very gently. Um, if, it's, if it's his weekly bath, um, no, I will just pop him in the bath. I always try and um, just separate any little knots and tangles before the bath because I really want to know how I'm going to treat that hair um, while it's in the bath if I need to put extra conditioner in there because there might be some broken coat. Um, just things like that. And then and then using the medium to coarse side pins on my smaller comb, using that first and just taking that through his coat. And once that 
goes through the coat freely. Then I'm going to flick it around onto the medium side. And then, and I've hit a little knot through here. And then take my slicker back through and then move on to our next section. Now I'm going to move on to our flexi slicker because I use this a lot with dash and I'm going to brush my next section down. So another question. Kristen asked, does your sticker have protective tips? My standard Google Forms to see the things painful on the skin. Yeah, this one has um, earlier I went through all the slickers, so this one has protective tips on on the pins. So if you do have a sensitive dog. Yeah, the, this slicker is absolutely perfect. Or a dog that has broken skin or any sort of skin irritations, anything caused by um, immune problems, things like that. It's really, really great. And it still separates the coat really well. Um, to brush dash? Yeah. Um, it would probably take me about, I would say, 10, 15 minutes. So I want to quickly talk about technique. So as I'm brushing dash, if we, at the start, we quickly spoke about um We quickly spoke about um, how the pins are formed. So they come out, they come out and then back. So as we're brushing our dog with the slicker, the slicker actually catches onto any dead coat and helps remove that dead coat. If the slicker pins were straight, it actually wouldn't stretch that coat out and pull out any of that dead coat or any of those knots and tangles. So when we're using our slicker, it's important to always brush downwards or brush upwards. What we don't want to do and what I see a lot of is people brushing sideways. So the slicker is actually going sideways and not up all down so when we brush sideways with the slicker see how it actually doesn't the pins don't penetrate through that coat at all but as soon as we brush up sorry down or upwards the slicker is actually doing its job and the pins are working so and we can see the little bits of dead hair that's being removed when we're using the slicker correctly versus going sideways. So when you're first beginning to brush your dog, really take your time and go this slow. So movement is this slow. And really get your technique and um, get that really honed in so you're really doing the right thing by the coat and then you can always go upwards when we've got a curly coated dog and nice and slow and steady and not not this way not using the slicker sideways using it downwards nice and slow and you can actually feel when you're going through your dog's coat with the slicker, you can feel the little snarls and tangles catch on the slicker. 
and you can just feel them and then once they're removed you can feel like that smoothness over that coat and another technique that I see a lot of is people flicking up like this so what this actually does is pulls on our dog's um, skin and makes them feel really uncomfortable and it actually doesn't help remove or separate the coat. It will just help tease that hair, making more knots in that coat. So as, we're, as you're flicking like this, it's actually making more no, knots in your dog's coat and it's not separating the coat. So you need to use a slicker how it's designed. So making sure that we're separating all that coat. Is there another question? Vanessa has a client that is born for when it comes to brushing their dog. That's turned them up late. What do you suggest for mats in the middle of a long coat? I couldn't quite hear the end of it, sorry. What do you suggest for mats in the middle of a long coat? Mats in the middle of a long coat, I don't understand. Um, sorry, Vanessa, I didn't understand your question. Um, can you read it out again, Cole? What do you suggest for mats in the middle of a long coat? So do you mean if there is a mat in, so the dog's not matted and then all of a sudden there's a mat in this section? I hope that's what you mean, I think. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so... I wouldn't just go to this mat and start grooming it out. I would still work my way through that coat. So if we can see with Dash's coat, I'm just going to spray a little bit of coat conditioning spray in there. And he gets really sensitive around his back leg and his flank area. So he has a lot of knots through his flank area, through here. Um, so what I would do is I wouldn't just start at this area. I would still have my method of grooming this leg first and then coming into this area and then grooming the other side. So then the whole dog is getting groomed. And as I come into our matted area, I'll just move him up a little bit more. Lay down, buddy. And pop a bit of conditioning spray in there. And I would try and find where the mat and the knot actually starts. So this is his leg here. And just working my slicker down that leg. And then coming around into that flank area. And again, I'm just grooming sections at a time through this matted area here. So I'm not going to come in and just start using my slicker. I'm going to still do small sections at a time. And you can see the sections that I'm doing. And another section. So I'm just working through that knot. And then I'm going to cross check it with my comb using the coarse side first. So there's no knots in that area. But then if I go to put it through the, the other side, I haven't brushed, like there is quite a few knots in there. So my comb's not going through. And I'm not going to like just pull that through his coat because that would really upset and hurt him. So I'm only going to do sections at a time.
and I don't know if you guys can see, but I'm getting right down to the base of his coat. Oh, back a bit, cool. Yeah. Yeah, and so you can see that I'm getting right down to that base. You can see it separating through there. So as I'm line brushing, I'm making sure I'm doing that section at a time. So I'm just not brushing over the top of him. Small sections. Cross check with my comb. Oh, and there's a little tangle there. So when my comb doesn't go through anymore, I'm going to remove my comb and then go back through with my slicker. And then cross-check again with my comb and I've removed that, that knot. And then if we have a look at our slicker, I like to remove all the dead coat in the slicker all the time because what actually happens is as the hair builds up in our slicker, so if we don't remove that, it can then catch on our healthy coat and it can actually feel like there's knots in there, but in fact there's not. It's just the dead coat that's stuck in our slicker. So popping our comb through our slicker all the time and just removing that, that dead hair. Is there another question, Cor? For a dog that customers come in every four to six weeks, when are you most likely to brush before or after the bath? Um, I always... Um, this was a question about bathing before or after as Dash is showing his, <laughs> his, um, his little jewels. <laughs> I always have a look at the coat. If the dog um, has little matted areas that are, not, that are super tight, then I will um, try and help break up that knot before the bath. Um, I just try and, um, what's the word? I really try and look at the coat and understand what it needs before the bath. Um, if I feel like, you know, the coat doesn't have many knots, it's hardly got any, um, any undercoat, there's no, you know, twigs or leaves or anything in the coat then I might bath the coat first but I'll generally assess the coat and make an informed decision on what is in the coat so it might have really a lot of dead coat in there it might have a lot of knots that I need to really remove before the bath so it's sort of understanding what type of coat that breed has as well because some breeds um, their coat when you pop it in the bath, like a Bichon, when you pop them in the bath and you're bathing them and they've got a lot of um, knots and tangles, most of the time you can get them out in the bath or during the drying process. But then some breeds, some poodles, they might have um, a really coarser coat and, you know, it can be harder to remove after the bath. So you've really got to know your different coat types and your breeds to make that informed decision during that assessment when that dog comes into your salon. I hope that helps. Jody asked, can we put photos up of the dog they're grooming on your Facebook? I'm doing one leg. 
tons of place photos. Yeah, yes, definitely. <laughs> That's awesome. So, Cor, you'll have to have a look. Yeah, definitely post your photos. I'd love to see all your grooming. So, um, yeah, especially if you've learnt things off our YouTube channel, definitely share them with me. Like, I'd love to see that. Is there a difference between cat and dog slippers? Um, <laughs> I'm not really um, a cat groomer as such, so I'm, um, I've probably only groomed about four cats in my whole life, so I'm probably not the person to ask about cat grooming. I generally know everything about dog grooming but not cat grooming. I'm so sorry, so sorry. Do you charge extra for brushing out and having coat? Um, I do charge extra. Um, but I don't have a huge clientele, so it's rare if I've got a dog that has a matted coat. Um, and I really like to get my clients in that um, so they understand how to brush and maintain their dog's coat at home. So then it makes my job easier um, during the grooming process as well. So if we can see through... Oh, no, it's all right. Go closer again. Cool. So I'm going to brush his head. I can't like how. Yep. Okay, so through his crest area, he gets very knotty and he's got a few little knots through the back of his skull area and he's a dog that really likes to um, get into... Um, dirt and he hops upside down and rubs on his back so this is always getting um, nice and scruffy so I'm going to show you guys how I line brush up into the top of his head okay so I'm going to use the coat conditioning spray and I use it pretty um, like a lot in his crest because I like this to be nice and full and I'm going to make a starting point. So maybe if I move him that side. There's a bit of a glare coming in. Yeah, maybe turn the light off behind you. That'll do. At the back call. Okay. There's, it's quite a sunny day here, so I'm trying to eliminate the sun coming in so you guys can see. But I've made a spot where I can start up to his crest so remembering to use our slicker downwards or upwards not sideways And then you can see how I'm getting to the base of his coat. And once I've done this small section, I'm going to take my comb and gently comb through that area. And that just ensures that I've removed all those knots and tangles. And then I'm going to do another section. So just moving that section with my slicker. And I like to hold on to the section that I'm not brushing yet and then just gently work that through the coat. Another question? Is a shampoo, does the shampoo of the head help speed up the brushing process? Having a clean coat there was a question about um, shampoo and conditioner. Does it speed up the um, brushing process? If you've got a really, really dirty coat, 
um, I wouldn't brush. I would do all the work in the bath um, because a dirty coat is more susceptible to breaking. And when we have a broken coat, it can, when we're going through with our slicker, it can actually feel like there's knots in there, but there's no knots. It's just broken, damaged coat caused from a dirty coat. So in that regard, having a clean coat, shampooing, conditioning, making sure there's no dirt in that coat and in the hair follicle um, definitely does help. And it, again, it goes back to keeping that coat nice and hydrated as we're grooming. What was that question? How do you get the knots out of the bath, in the bath? In the bath, I will generally, if there is um, major mats in the bath, I will use, I will definitely use a lot of shampoo and I won't scrub. I will just gently work through the knot um, and try and separate it with the shampoo, making sure I've removed all the dirt and debris in that mat, but I won't um, scrub it hard or anything like that. I'll just do it really, really gentle and I wash, um, I wash every dog twice so they're always super clean and then I'll really concentrate with the conditioner and I will generally use um, the universal slicker so the pins are a little bit firmer and I will just gently tease out um, those knots and tangles in the bath. Um, if the knot's not too bad, I will do it after the bath, so during the drying process. Sometimes if it's just a lot of undercoat and it's not healthy coat that's matted up, if there is a lot of dead coat in there, the dryer will generally push that mat out from underneath um, at the base of the coat. It'll push it out and separate it during the drying, but I prefer to do it with a high-velocity dryer um, or a dryer that has enough force that's going to help separate the coat as, as we're drying. It is really hard. The more the coat dries in that knot, the harder it is to remove the knot. So um, if you do find that you do have a really large mat that's clean, it's been conditioned, but it's a really low... Um, slow drying process then it is harder to remove that knot like you'll really have to put the dryer onto that matted area and using a coat conditioning spray on that mat and then go through with the slicker and really concentrate on that area to remove that mat while the dryer is like on that particular area so just concentrate on that area I hope that answers that question because it can get a little bit more technical when you're talking about removing knots in the bath um, and things like that. Was there any other questions, Carl? Yeah, you've done a whole dog knot, mate, so do one half of the leg. Oh, but I haven't done his front legs yet. <laughs> so, so you're doing well. Okay, so now I'm getting up to our matted area through the top of these crest. And I'm going to use a firmer side of my slicker and make sure there is no dead coat in my slicker. And then just work through that area. And I can actually feel where the knot is um, through here because the slicker is making noises and it's harder to get through. Like I really have to take my time and make sure Dash is feeling comfortable as I'm going through that area with, with the knots in. You generally know when your dog's feeling uncomfortable because they'll move a little bit or make a little squeaky noise or a little sigh or something like that. So just working through that knot. And... As I'm using my slicker, I'm starting at the base and then working up into that crest.
And then using our comb, yep, and it's all not free. So then we'll move to our next section and we can see there's a huge knot in this area here. So I'm going to pull down a little bit of hair with my slicker. So it's basically, that's the knot in that area. So I've separated it from the area I haven't brushed yet. And then using my coat conditioning spray, just work through that area. And sometimes you might need to even separate that hair again. So halving it, just making sure you get all that, all those knots and tangles out. If your dog, if it is too much doing a whole section, um, just separate it. And once you've done one area, then you can do the other half. And then I'll cross check with my comb but I can feel there's still knots in there. So I'm going to remove my comb, spray a, one more spritz of the co-conditioning spray and then gently work through back through it. And I'm going to put my comb through to see where it is. So the knots in this area So just working through that half of the of his crest. And see, I'm not doing really fast going through really, really quick. It's nice and slow and steady. And I can feel the the tension as on any knots as I go through that coat. See? And all done. So it's figuring out where those knots are and going from there. And then on the back of his skull, it is quite knotty through here. So again, using my slicker, and going through the back of his skull area and really separate separating that hair how's everyone going with their brushing if they're joining in hope they're doing well and then that's up to his head Okay, so let's do behind our dog's ears because this is an area where I see a lot of um, people really struggling with. Yeah, just a little bit. I'll get Corey just to zoom out quickly. Okay, a little bit closer. Perfect. Okay, so I really like to find behind their ears. So that is the back of his ear and there's mats right at the back. So again, I'm going to spritz that area and then just gently take my slicker through. And if I feel like I've haven't got the knot, I'm going to start again and move some more hair forward. And work through. And as I'm holding him, I'm actually pulling his ear forward and holding his ear in my hand and then around his muzzle as well. And it's actually quite loose. Um, it just helps support his head and support that ear as well. And it can take a little bit for dogs to really, really understand um, what's happening because if all of a sudden you've never done this to your dog and you're pulling that ear forward, it can cover that eye 
and it can feel quite uncomfortable. So just gently do it and just do small sections and just try and get your dog used to that area being groomed. And then I'm going to separate that ear. So if I take my comb behind his ear, that knot is still there. So going to use my slicker again and really work into that, that ear behind that ear. And then, oh, it's right there, that knot. So I know where it is. So the knot's here. So I've moved that knot forward. Use a little bit of co-conditioning spray. And then comb a small section, making sure there's no knots. And then the knotted area, I'm just going to separate in half and then go through with my slicker, a little bit more coat conditioning spray there, and then work through that area. And let go of that next lot of hair. And then I've removed that knot. So he's got no knots now behind that ear. And the little knot that was causing all the trouble is so tiny, like really tiny. So that's sometimes all it can be is that small little snarl that's causing all those problems. And then when we're doing our actual ear leather, I like to place that ear leather in my hand and then brush small sections at a time as I'm going through that ear. If you feel like it's pulling, just pop a bit of co-conditioning spray in and we're supporting that ear leather on the palm of our hand. And this will work with um, poodle ears as well. And then pop that ear leather, the outside of the ear leather in our palm because then we're going to brush the inside of our ear leather. And making sure there's no knots and tangles in our inner ear inside on that inner ear lever. And then use our comb to make sure we've got no knots and tangles through there. Okay, so let's do his little whiskers. For his little whiskers, I'm going to use our little um, protective tips pin, um, protective tips on our pins, so we can see that. And then I'm only going to do, again, small sections at a time. So I wouldn't come in and just brush, 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 because this is like a really, really sensitive area. And of course, Dash is a digger, so he's got lots of um, gunk and things like that in there. So I'm going to start at the back of his muzzle and then just gently work through. And I'm going to pop some of the co-conditioning spray on the brush instead of directly onto his muzzle. So this actually puts the coat conditioning spray into his muzzle, but sometimes spraying directly into their face isn't, isn't a good idea. <laughs> and then just doing a small area. Dash isn't a fan of his um, face being groomed at all.
And then I can feel a little bit of a tangle through there. And through his little whiskers. And normally I would be at the front of him. And sometimes it's a good idea to hold on to their little chin hair as well. And it helps you feel when they're going to pull away that when they pull, you can sort of let go of that chin hair and be prepared that they're pulling or carrying on or anything like that. You've just got that little bit more control over them. Okay, so once we've done one side, we will then cross-check with our comb. And there's no knots through there now compared to the other side. So we would never get that comb through. I'm just going to spray a little bit of co-conditioning spray on that slicker brush and then just gently work through. And you can, I can feel that it's uncomfortable for him because he is pulling away at the same time but we definitely need to get through this muzzle. So being extra gentle. And again, I'm not going sideways with my slicker. I'm brushing with the direction of the coat on his muzzle area. And then just removing those little bits of food, bits of dirt, any little bits of debris. And I always like to brush um, where his tear staining is as well. So this will help remove any of that dead broken coat in that area because as soon as we remove that, the new healthy hair is going to begin to start to grow through. Okay, so we've done his little muzzle. We've done an ear. So then we're going to do his little paw. Sit down, buddy. Good boy. So I like to support him underneath his elbow and spritz that area. And remember what we said earlier about moving, when our dog's naturally moving, they're moving outwards, they're not moving sideways. So we want our dog to feel nice and comfortable. And again, I'm going to start at his paw and then work up his leg. We got any more questions, Paul? Um, when brushing, I feel like sometimes it takes forever. Is that the technique? Yeah, the sometimes it does take a little bit longer than usual. Um, and, you know, it depends on what adventures your dog's been in as well. So it might, sometimes it might take you longer, sometimes it might not. So um, you will speed up with um, when your technique improves. So, and you'll be able to feel when your technique improves because when you put this comb through, it's not going to snag, it's going to go straight through. So you'll just begin to know when the technique is working. So when we're going through that coat. 
and separating that coat. Um, who wrote that? Jody. Jody. Um, Jody, where are you from? Are you from Melbourne or? Melbourne. So we have lots of different stockers. So um, pet barn, pet stock, best friends, grooming salons. So if you've got a groomer who's closed um, at the moment in Melbourne because of the lockdowns, um, you might be able to contact them and um, if they sell our products, um, maybe you can do a click and collect with them. Um, or if you prefer to get things delivered, um, Pet Circle have our products. Golden Doodle, a lady brushing it every day. The fur is like a poodle, should I use a relax condition to play on here every day? Um, I would definitely use a relax and I would be, um, if it's a, a dog that has more of a heavy tight curl, I would be using more of a universal type slicker, something where the pins are a little bit firmer and it's really going to go through that coat. Stand up now, buddy. Okay, so I've got Dutch to stand up because I want to do underneath his armpit and at the back of this front leg. So remember what I was talking about earlier, that we need to get down to their level. And then if we can't get down to their level, it's a good idea to just pop our slicker underneath and not lift that leg right up. So just gently using the slicker underneath that, that armpit area, that underarm. And I'm using it the same way, so I'm not going sideways with the slicker. It's right, buddy. Ash normally lays down for this, so he's probably trying to figure out how he's... And then brushing in that underarm area and then again just doing sections at a time. And we can see where I'm coming through with that slicker. Then using our comb, he hates his armpits um, brushed. Good boy buddy, that's all right. So I've gone to the protective pin one. That's a little bit more gentle. I must say, like, I really love this slicker. It's so good. And see, there's still a little bit of matting in that area. And then I'm going to use a little bit more co-conditioning spray to help slide that, those little knots and tangles out. And then it's gone. Oh, good boy, buddy. And then we can go to the inside of the front leg and the back of the front leg as well. boy good boy buddy and always reassuring your dog that it's okay that everything's going to be fine and then if we use our fine tooth comb it actually separates it really well. And that's pretty fine. So the teeth are so close together 
but it just glides through that coat now. Bring down the next section. Then if we just took our fine tooth comb, it wouldn't go through. So I'm going to use some coat conditioning spray. And work through that coat again with our slicker. And this area is usually an area that is quite dirty um, because it's closest to the ground, closest to his pads. And then and then it's going through. So we would never use our comb to, to remove knots and tangles. Our comb's just used to separate that coat and ensuring that we've got no knots and tangles and it also helps lift the coat. See, the comb is penetrating right down to the base of that, that coat. Up, buddy. Good boy. Okay, so now we'll do his little tail. Maybe move the camera down a bit. Good boy, buddy. Maybe a little bit closer. Yeah. Okay. So if we look at their tails, the hair on their tail falls downwards. So as we groom their tails, it's a lot different to when we're grooming their body. So we always want to groom their tail with the direction of the coat growth. So the hair, the coat growth is how the hair is sitting or how it's falling. So it's falling downwards. So this is how we're going to, to brush it. It is a lot different to their body. Their body, we would go up and down to ensure that we've removed all the um, knots and tangles and any dead hair. But with their tail, we're always going to go with the direction. So... Just going to spritz his tail again. And I'm going to only do small sections at a time again. Hang on, buddy. And I never like to move him by his tail. I'll always gently lift him. And then just grooming... Um, small sections going with the direction of the coat and we can see it separating and then move on to the next section and I always like to hold the section I'm not grooming in my hand and support the tail as well um, the brushes you can buy online from us. So Melanie, melanienewman.com.au. Oops, I'm dropping all the combs, all the slickers. And brushing both sides of his tail. And then our next section. So this section is actually on the tip of his tail. So the tip of his tail is here. So I'm going to hang on to that tip because I don't want to pull the tip and him getting upset at me. So I'm going to hang on to that tip and then just gently brush through with my slicker. So I'm constantly supporting all those sensitive areas with my hands as I'm grooming him. 
What position do you place dashes in when you brush his tummy? Okay, yeah, I'll do his tummy in a minute for you. And then the next section, and I've still got hold of his actual tail. And then we'll work back up to the top, but I'm still brushing with the direction of his coat growth. This question, when you're feathering the, the sides in the belly of the coat, should I be brushing towards the ground in the way the hair is falling or towards the tail in the way the follicle is pointing? Yeah. It's the tape shape. And then making sure we got all that hair. It's running through smoothly. And then cross checking with my comb. I'm making sure I've removed all those knots and tangles. Now, one thing about with using a comb on the tail is if you've got a dog that has a slight hook on the tip of the tail, we need to be very careful. So we wouldn't just all of a sudden go through our comb because their tail can actually get caught in the teeth of our comb and it can actually hurt your dog really badly. So when we're using the comb, it's all right, buddy. When we're using the comb, I'm going to hold onto that tip and make sure I'm supporting his actual tail as I'm combing through that hair. Let's stand up for a minute, Bubs. And then as I go down, I've still got the tip of that tail. Always holding that tip. That's so super, super important. Okay, so let's do the sides and the underneath. Show us your side, buddy. Again, as I'm working through his coat, actually I'll do this side. <laughs> He's like, are we done yet? Are we done? I'm going to line brush. I'm going to line brush with the direction of his coat. Heading over his rib cage. So this is as he's standing up. And again, just doing those small sections at a time. And you can see the coat really separating if he moves his, his head out of the way. And then getting our comb that he's standing on and going through. And he's got a little bit of a snarl there. So remove our comb. And brush through with our slicker and then go back through with our. He's got a knot there. So remove my comb. Go back through with my slicker. And then cross check with my comb. So as we're doing our, our belly area, I like to get my dogs to stand up and then I lift this front leg. I use a little bit of coat conditioning spray and the softer side of the slicker because their belly area and if you've got a boy dog, um, it can be a little bit more sensitive for them. And then just gently brush towards the back of them. Just so he feels super comfortable. He's got a bit of grass in there. You can also do this after you've done their 
their little armpit area. And you can follow this through to the side of your dog as well, heading towards that flank area. But again, cross check with your comb. If you're hitting knots, remove your comb and then start that process of line brushing. Which side of the slip out should I use first, the side with the base arrow or the other side then with the same? The... So that's all his dead coat, which is a lot for him. So if I'm grooming an area that is quite thick and I know it's got a lot of knots in it, I will definitely use the firmer side, which is the darker side. If it's around his head area where he, he rubs a lot here, so I really like to save this coat, I will use the softer area, the softer side, which is a lighter side, and then just gently work that through. Because I know that he doesn't have a lot of um, dead coat in here because he's constantly rubbing it. So he's probably removing it himself, um, trying to do me a favour. And then just work that through. But if it's a heavy area, so this neck area, I will definitely use the firmer side, which is a darker side. And working through that coat. Check it out, buddy. And then underneath their chin, so turn around, buddy. And then going, heading down towards that leg that we've brushed out. Because we've brushed out behind his ear. So now we're doing that chest area. And then in front of that ear, there's a little bit of a tangle through here. And then the next section in front of that ear. And then it meets up with where we've brushed before. I'll brush the inside of this front leg again. So I'm going to use a firmer side on this front leg. Uh, did someone write Dash is a perfect boy? Patient. Patient. Yeah. Yes. He's learnt to be patient. I've taught him to be patient. But he's he's not really. <laughs> when he thinks that he's finished, he'll be dancing on the spot. Let me go. I'm done. I know. Yes. Brushing upwards as well. So did we have any more questions about brushing? Okie dokie. So we'll do, um, we'll keep doing lives as well. So I'm going to eventually try and do one every week. So maybe our next one can be 
bathing. So maybe I can do a live on bathing a dog that's already been brushed out versus bathing a dog that hasn't been brushed out and how we would help remove those knots and tangles. So let me know what you guys want to see. And we have lots of different videos on um, brushing, bathing, um, little bits of dematting, so um, dematting ears and tails as well. So check them out on our channel um, and definitely subscribe so you get the notifications when there is a new video. Was there any other questions? Um, if you guys wanted to contact us, you can also send an email to info at melanienewman.com.au and ask your questions and send us some photos of your dogs being groomed. Like I would love to see it. Love to see all those finished products, all those beautiful pooches. Okay, and then I would finish him off with some cologne so he still smells nice. Oh, you guys are very welcome. Oh, you're off to groom your dogs? That's awesome. Let me know how you go. So, you know, you might be grooming your dog and then you'll come up with other questions and things like that. So, um, yeah, definitely ask. Uh, yeah, yeah. We miss our Bichon catch-ups. Um, and my miniature poodle is, is, a, is a member as well. We don't tell him that it's just a Bichon thing. Okay, guys, so I'll leave you with your dog. So, yes, please let me know if you need help. I want your dogs to look gorgeous all the time and have those beautiful coats that you've always wanted. So I'm here to help you guys achieve that. So, um, yeah, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. <laughs> Bye.